Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody love the Lord? And we got anybody that love the Lord up in here tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. Hey, truly, truly, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Is anybody just going to step up and step out tonight? Huh? Hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. You know, we praise and worship the Lord up in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I feel the spirit of the Lord up in here tonight. And I believe the Lord is going to have his way. He's going to have his way. Hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. Let's give him another hand clap of worship. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, have your way, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I see tonight that we have a few visitors in the house. So if Peace Tabernacle don't mind, will you just step across the aisle right quick and greet some of our visitors and your neighbor and your neighbor as well and just let them know it's good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. And greet that neighbor, that the one that you haven't talked to in a while. Greet that neighbor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. You Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy. You're worthy. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If y'all want to grab your Bibles, we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 6. 
Praise your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe tonight there is a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord tonight. Is there any hearers in the house? Is there any doers in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name, sweet Jesus. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 6. And it says, And the Spirit of the Lord of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in, in pieces and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000. And then the men of Judah, 30,000. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow, by that time, the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and shewed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. And we're going to stop right there. Brother Staines, will you pray over the order of the service tonight? Hallelujah, Lord. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of worship. Let's give him another hand clap of praise. Let's give him another hand clap of worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. And I want you to notice in the Bible, in the ninth verse, the verse that we just read, I want you to Notice, especially in the middle of the ninth verse, in the middle of the ninth verse that we just read, and it says, by that time the sun be hot, you shall have help. And I want you to turn to someone or to a neighbor and tell that neighbor tonight, hold on, help is on the way. Hallelujah. And as I meditated and I wondered what particular passage of scripture should I read from or preach from, the Lord gave me to understand that there are so many people who are living a helpless and hopeless life. And if you wonder why people do the things that they do and why so many people are suicidal and some resort to drugs and some resort to alcohol it is that so many people are listed among the suicidal and some that succeed in taking their very lives and others make vain attempts please hear me tonight church it is simply because so many people abandon hope they feel that what I'm into, there's no way out and, and there's no escape and no one really cares what I'm going through. And there was a beautiful illustration of that in the scripture when Jesus in the fifth chapter of Luke around the 12th verse and it said, and it came to pass 
while he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy who seen Jesus fell on his face and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. The man knew that Jesus had the power, but he wondered whether he had the love. He said, Lord, I know you can do it. I know you got the power, but I don't know if you're willing to do it on my behalf. And we live in a world today where power is demonstrated in so many ways, but there seems to be a great shortage when we think in terms of human compassion, love, and concern. So many people today find themselves in a hopeless state. And I believe here tonight that there's someone just so happened to be here. Bored stiff. Not having anything to do. But I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're into. It doesn't matter how bad might be your prognosis. I want to tell you, hold on. Help is on the way. Give God another chance because he can straighten out that jigsaw puzzle that you call your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is a passage out of the page of history, out of the history of the nation of Israel. And I think most every Bible student knows something about the history of the nation of Israel. For when God called Abraham when his name was yet Abram, when his family left from Ur of the Chaldees and went down into Haran of Mesopotamia, and the Lord called him out. The first three verses of Genesis chapter 12, the Lord actually promised him a sevenfold blessing. And here was a man that was already 75 years of age, and it was not during that anti-Diluvian period, which means the time before the flood of Noah, when men had life expectancy of six, seven, eight, or even 900 years. But it was after the deluge when the Lord had cut man days down into 120 years. But even the 90th Psalm says in the 10th verse that the days of man years are three score and 10, which is only 70 years. If by reason of strength they be four score 80 years, that will strengthen labor and sorrow. But here God calls a man at 75 and says, I'm going to make you a father of multitudes. Well, the first question I would ask, well, Abraham, how many kids you have now? None. He's 75 and his wife's 60, 65. But the Lord says, out of thee will come multitudes. And one thing I want you to notice about God that you have to notice about God. We tried to call God to act in our time frame. But God doesn't have to act in our time frame. See, because God created time, and he knows how long you and I have to live. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. But one thing I want to tell you tonight, that if God places you in a position, he will allow the proper set of circumstances to arise that will validate his leadership. And now I want to take just about two minutes to encourage that Sunday school teacher or whatever your position might be and you don't know how you're going to do it, let me tell you that when God sanctions your position, he will allow the proper set of circumstances to arise that will validate your leadership. You don't have to worry because in the body of Christ, every joint is supplied by the Holy Spirit. Every person that has a part in the body of Christ, God will validate your position. Now, the only thing is, that, please hear me, don't get upset. Because everybody can't be the head. Somebody has to be the last joint on the little finger. And, and, perce and perhaps somebody may have to be the toenail. But you don't have to worry. And it doesn't matter where you are. You can rejoice knowing I'm in the body. Is there anybody up in here just glad to be in the body? Is there anybody up in here just glad to be in the body of Christ? If you are, give the Lord a hand clap of worship. Give him a hand clap of praise. Give him a hand clap of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So after Saul had been anointed, he went home to Gibeon. And the critics were saying, how can this man save us? The 11th chapter of 1 Samuel opens up with Nahash. Nahash the Ammonite. Nahash decided that Israel had become a monarchy. In other words, an embarrassment. And they, don't, they haven't had time to raise an army, and they don't know anything about raising a king. So Nahash and his army, they decided that to go down to a little town by the name of Jabesh Gilead. Nahash and his army, they went down to the little town of Nabesh, and they surrounded that little town. And when the men of Jabesh Gideon, they looked out and saw that their little town was surrounded, and they decided, well, we can't come out and fight Nahash and his army. So the best thing for us to do is just surrender without a fight. Well, I just come to tell everybody up in here, never surrender without a fight. If the enemy tries to take your family, if he tries to the young man that's out on drugs, hallelujah, spouse staying out half the night, daughter somewhere on the street corner selling her very body, don't give in to the enemy and say, well, that's what's happening nowadays. You need to make up your mind and tell the devil and tell the enemy, I don't care how big and powerful your army may be, but I will not surrender to the forces of evil. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise. Give him a hand clap of worship. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise your wonderful name. So the men of Jabez surrendered and said, we tell you what, Nahash, you don't even have to fight. We'll surrender. Nahash said, I tell you, the only way that I'll sign a treaty with it, if you would have all of your men line up and let me pluck out their right eye. Now, the Bible plainly says he did this not to weaken them, but he did it to lay a reproach. But actually, he did it to embarrass them. And everybody knew that the children of Israel had three annual meetings with God. The Lord said that three times a year, all of your men shall appear before me that ended up being in Jerusalem. But at this time, they were still meeting in Shiloh. For when the book of 1 Samuel opened, when Hannah would go with her husband Elkanah, and they would appear before the Lord in Shiloh. And our brother Wadi wondered, how did Shiloh get replaced by Jerusalem? But as I kept on reading in the book of 1 Samuel, understand tonight, church, that Eli's son, Hophna, and Phinehas, they were priests, but they were not wholly dedicated to the Lord. So when they took the Ark of the Covenant to the battlefield, and when the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant, there was nothing to bring the people back to Shiloh. Uh -huh. And because the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. You understand the night peace tabernacle? It was a little box about two feet high, about two feet wide, about two feet long. In it was a pot of manna. In it was two tables of stone which were written upon the Ten Commandments. In it was Aaron rod that budded. The type of it was a mercy seat that was that was covered with pure gold. On each end was the cherubim angels facing inward, their wings covering the mercy seat. And when God would talk to Moses, smoke would rise up between the cherubim. So as long as the Ark of the Covenant was in Shiloh, it was a meeting place for the people of God three times a year. But when the Ark was stolen, there was no need to go back to Shiloh. And I want to tell everybody up in here, the reason why folks don't want to go to church anymore, because a lot of folks go to church, but the Ark, has been stolen. The presence of God is no longer there. And nothing is a greater waste of time than going to a so-called meeting house and the presence of God is not there. God wants his people to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his court with praise. And when you begin to praise God, you create a cloud for the presence of God to dwell in. Somebody needs to stand to their feet and tell the devil, I'm drawing a line and I dare you to cross. Tell the devil I'm drawing the line and I dare you to cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Somebody give him another hand clap of praise. Give him another hand clap of praise. Give him a hand clap of worship. Hallelujah. Give him another hand clap of worship. Because I'm almost through. I'm almost through preaching. Give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church. Tell the devil, get down where you belong. Get down under my feet. Get down the way you belong. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to tell somebody tonight, if you're serious, and I, you know what? And I told this at Brother Husband Church. I said it at Brother Williams Church. And I'm going to tell Peace Tabernacle tonight. And I mean it with every breath I breathe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're serious, if you're serious about fighting Nahash and his army, if you're serious about defeating the, the enemy, if you're serious about defeating the devil, cross it out of your mind. If I go to church once a week, I've done my duty. It's not about doing your duty. It's about fighting a war. It's about being free. That's why you come back Tuesday night. That's why you come back Wednesday night. And if, they, and if Peace Tabernacle is having a revival, then you come back every night. And when you're not in church, you're on your knees. You're in the Word because we got a battle to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And hey, and when you do that, and when you do that, then you've done what David did. You all remember? You all remember? Then you've done what David did. In the second book of 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verse 17 and following, when they anointed, when they anointed David king over Israel, they came up looking for David. But David was down in the stronghold, getting himself fortified. And when he came up, he got his army together. And when he got his army together, he could see the Philistines from one side of the valley to the other. And you would have thought that he would send one regiment to hit him on the left and another regiment to hit him on the right. But what David did, he broke right through the middle. He broke right through the middle. And he said, look at what my God has done. My God has made a breach over my enemy. Hallelujah. In other words, in other words, it's the, he was the Lord of the great through. In other words, when God gives you power, when God gives you Holy Ghost power, you don't have to crack up. You don't have to back up. You don't have to break down because God will give you a breakthrough. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise. Give him a hand clap of praise. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 You see, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. When God gives you Holy Ghost power, you don't back up. We don't crack up. We don't break down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You tell that devil he's a liar. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Somebody needs to stand on your feet and tell the devil, I'm not backing up. I'm not breaking down. I'm not backing up. I'm not shutting up. Somebody needs to tell him. Tell him. Tell him to get down under my feet. Get down where you belong. Hallelujah. 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 We got a battle to fight. We got a battle to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. He can't stay up in my house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. He can't stay up in here. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give him another hand clap of worship. Give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all can be seated. Hallelujah. So let me tell you what happened at the end of the story. Praise God. Hallelujah. Saul got angry. See, that's what happened to the enemy. That's what happened to the devil. He gets angry. Huh? Hallelujah. Saul got angry and he took a yoke of oxen and he started whacking those oxen into pieces and sent pieces throughout everywhere and said to the men of Judah, if you don't come out to me and to Samuel, and to fight against Nahash the Ammonite, this is what's going to happen to all of your oxen. But check this out. And don't you know in one day's time, 
300,000 Israeli soldiers showed up. 30,000 soldiers of Judah showed up. They sent word to the men in Jabesh, Gilead, and said, you don't have to worry about anything that Nahash said. All you got to do is hold on until morning. Mm, come on now. But by, by the time the sun get hot, you shall have help. And I just want to tell everybody, before I take my seat, I don't care what the enemy threats. He said he's going to do. Uh -huh. He may be like the big bad wolf uh -huh. that says I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your house down. But I want to tell everybody, hold on. Help is on the way. Don't jump off that bridge. Don't shoot up an OD on dope. Don't throw your life away. Uh -huh. Don't give up on that lost loved one. Don't give up on that lost child. Because help is on the way. Don't give up. You keep praising. You keep dancing. You keep shouting. You keep dancing. You keep praising. You keep dancing. And you keep praising. You give God the glory. You give God the glory. Hallelujah. And if you keep your eyes on Jesus. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, he is our help. Uh -huh. He is our way maker. He is our savior. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, he said, I'll make a way. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there any believers in the house? Is there any worshipers in the house? Is there any, is anybody got a need in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know our openness, you know our openness service up. When I said, He can straighten out that jigsaw puzzle that you call your life. I don't care if you're bound by drugs, if you're bound by alcohol. I don't care if you're bound with a lying spirit. He said, I am a deliverer. I am a healer. I will make a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Is there any believers in the house? Is there any believers in the house? Is there any worshipers in the house? Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Go oh, have your way, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If does anybody believe by tomorrow this time, we shall have help. Does anybody believe by tomorrow, this time, you shall have help? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody, if you believe that, stand to your feet. By tomorrow, this time, you shall have help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The altar is open. The altar is open. Hallelujah. And I want, come on, saints of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Does anybody I'm believe? I'm going to Praise the end of this camp. Hallelujah. Take back what it took from me. Come 